Welcome back. I'm Speed at the bottom of the helix. You all answered how you're watching this. And I guess every device on the planet was there except the one that I would have answered if I was home, a cathode ray tube TV. So thank you for answering. We're glad you guys are taking part of it. Our next presenter is from a place a little further than you might expect. The town of Uchu is located in Namibia. Yes, on the African continent. So today we will have our first African clinic. Uchu is the gateway to the world famous Itosha National Park. And I got to know her as a train enthusiast on YouTube and Facebook, chasing the trans number trains, which I model through the whole country of Namibia. She's also a 3D artist, as you'll see in the concept train that she designed and can even play guitar and sing. Today, she will show us how easy it is to model a piece of track in 3D using Blender. We welcome, all the way from Namibia, Grisandi Roth. Thank you, Speed, and thank you so much for having me. This is an amazing privilege for me, and I can't wait to show people how easy it is to do modeling. It's not as complicated as you think. So if you guys are ready, you can roll the video. Hi. So I've decided to pre-record this tutorial because I found personally it's a lot easier for me to cover all the essentials and everything you will need to know as a beginner at 3D modeling or if you're just deciding on trying out a new 3D program. In this case, the program I'll be demonstrating is Blender. I myself am a massive rail fan. I've loved trains all my life. I enjoy the thrill and excitement of chasing them and I'm especially fond of the local railroad here in Namibia, Transnamib. In its current state and its bright future. I also love creating new designs and new concepts for a story I've been writing the past few years now, which I hope to turn into a movie one day. And three months ago I started with the journey of 3D modeling in Blender as a means to illustrate my ideas. And in three months, I've clocked more than 480 hours. Actually, after I started working on this project, I've now clocked more than 560 hours. This is how my very first design looked like. Two months later, and I was able to recreate the house and location of my favorite cartoon, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Now, I am passionately designing and creating my own concept railroad for the story I'm writing. Please keep in mind that I'm taking some artistic liberties with this design, and it's still a work in progress. My ultimate goal is also to start designing 3D models that can be used for 3D printing. And that is exactly why I'm here, is to teach you how to build your own 3D models that you can use to 3D print, paint and use on your personal layout. This tutorial, however, will be just on getting you comfortable and familiar with the basics of Blender. Blender has a massive online community and you will be able to find endless amounts of tutorials on places like YouTube and other Blender related websites. So let's introduce Blender. What is it? Where can you download it? And most importantly, how much does it cost? On the website, Blender is stated as whether you are an animator, modeler, VFX, game developer, 3D printing, you name it, Blender's got you covered. You can simply Google Blender Download or go directly to their homepage www.blender.org. Then go to the download section. There you will find the latest version of Blender. Choose the version you want and let it download. And now, the big question, the price. Well, the wonderful thing about Blender is it's absolutely free. No catch, no adverts, no watermarks, no pay before you can export your model or 3D print your model. It is completely free. And you can get it today and you can start 3D sculpting, 3D modeling, anything you want to design for your personal layout. So, without further ado, let's get started with Blender. The first time you open up Blender, this is what you will see. 
You can then on the welcome screen under new file choose general. You will always be greeted with this default scene. Now I know, I know, opening up Blender for the first time might seem a bit overwhelming. But fear not fragile one for I am here to guide you and at the end of this tutorial we would have created some basic railway tracks, some ties and some fastenings. But let's start with the basics. Navigation, layout and interface of Blender. Now firstly, let's get used to the layout and interface of Blender. This big area in the middle is your 3D viewport. This is where you will spend most of your time, constructing, building, whatever model you want to create. On the left hand side we have the toolbar. The toolbar has options like the move, the rotate, scale, transform of objects. Here you have your different menus, view menu, your select menu, your add menu and your object menu. At the top you have your different workspaces. In this tutorial we're not going to be using any of the other workspaces, we're just going to be using layout. And on the right hand side, the top corner, you'll find your scene collection. This is your layers of different objects you will have in your scene. It's a good thing and a good practice from the beginning to keep your different objects organized. And it's a very good way of keeping track of all of your objects especially if it becomes an extremely complex scene. On this column is the properties tab. Here you will find different properties like your render properties, your modifiers, your particle properties, your object data, your vertex groups, your material properties. But in this tutorial we're also not going to be using this area. Here, this little menu, if you press N on your keyboard, it will disappear and come back. This is your, your object that you have selected. This is the location in the 3D world, the rotation in the 3D world, the scale and the dimensions. I'm using the metric system, but you can choose whatever system you prefer to use in Blender. Over here you have your magnifying glass, that is for zooming in and out, your hand is to move the view, then you have toggle the camera and switch to the perspective or orthographic projection. At the top here you have your different settings for the scene in front of you. For instance that little ball there is your wireframe settings so you can see the objects wireframes. Your solid mode, then you have your material preview mode and then you have your 3D rendered mode. But for this tutorial we're just going to be using the normal 3D solid view mode. That's the basics of the layout for now because we are moving on to navigation in Blender. So these little icons that we've discussed quickly, if you hold the little magnifying glass and move your mouse you will be able to zoom in and out of the object. The hand is your move the view. When you click it and hold it and move your mouse you'll be able to move around in the scene. The little camera icon is just to toggle between your normal view or through the camera view. And this is your orthographic projection or just your perspective. But using them is not the best method. I will teach you the shortcut keys that you can use to navigate in your 3D viewport. So to zoom in and out is easy, it's just scrolling your mouse wheel. Then you will zoom in and out. To move around you just hold the mouse wheel and you will be able to move around your object or rotate, orbit around your object. If you hold in shift and the middle mouse button you'll be able to move the scene like the hand icon I just showed you. So just to tell you again to orbit around your object is holding the middle mouse button. To move around in the scene to pan you can use shift and the middle mouse button. 
and to zoom in and out is just using and scrolling your mouse wheel. And that is the basics of navigating in the Freedy Viewport. Another thing to understand when navigating in the Freedy World of Blender is your axes. The green one across the screen is your Y axis. The red one is your X axis. And obviously from top to bottom will be your Z or Z axis. In the right hand corner you'll find your axes as your as it's displaying in your 3D viewport and what direction you are looking at. As you can see at the moment, Z is at the top and Y is running across the screen and X is going into the distance. You can also click on these ones to have different views from whatever side of the axis you want but I'm going to teach you the shortcut keys. On your numpad, 7 is your top-down view. 1 is you're looking down the y-axis. And 3 on your numpad is you're looking down the x-axis. The orthographic mode, 1, 3 and 7, is extremely helpful for precision designing on your models. Now let's continue navigating in the 3D viewport. One thing I want to teach you is how to select objects and how to remove them. By left clicking on an object, you will select the object. It will be highlighted in this orange color, then you will know it is selected. Let's learn how to remove them from the scene. Because for 3D modeling, we won't use the camera. So you can press delete or X on your keyboard and delete it. Do the same with the light, click on it, press X and delete it. Now if for some reason you lose an object, let's say you're panned out way out here and you don't know where your object is, an easy way to find your object is to press the period key on your numpad and it will zoom back to the object, the active object that you have selected. It's an easy and quicker way to also zoom into objects on your scene. If there's an object on the far side of your scene or your model, selecting it and clicking the period key will zoom into it. Let's delete this cube for now, as I want to teach you how to add an object. Pressing X and delete. In the middle of these axes you'll find this little red and white circle. That is the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor you can move around wherever you want by pressing shift and the right mouse button. Whenever you add an object it will always be added to where the 3D cursor is in the 3D world. It's always good to keep it in the center when adding objects. To snap it back to the center even if I click shift and the right mouse button it won't always be exactly in the center. To get it back to the center, you press Shift C and it will snap back to the center. Another thing I want to teach you is you may become disorientated while learning how to move around in the 3D world of Blender. And at the moment, you won't be able to tell when I'm actually upside down. A way to know if you're upside down is to look at your axes in the corner over here. You can see the Z axis is showing down, meaning we're upside down. So just hold in the middle mouse button to orbit until you see the Z axis is showing at the top. Now let's add an object. You can go to the add object menu up here where you will find all of the things you can add to your scene. Text, meshes, curves, lights, cameras. But I want to teach you the shortcut key because it will drastically increase your workflow when you learn the shortcut keys. So pressing Shift and A on your shortcut key will bring up the Add menu. You can then select whatever you want to add to your scene. But we're gonna stick 
with the meshes in this tutorial so we're gonna go to mesh and cube and there we've added a cube to our scene now we're going to learn how to rotate and move and scale this cube on the left hand side as we've discussed earlier is your toolbar menu if for some reason it's not displaying just press T on your keyboard and it will pop up again so with the object selected there you have your move options when you click on this these little arrows will appear clicking on the arrows on the points of the arrows you will move this object on the X axis on the Y axis or on the Z axis now to snap it back to the center just press Control Z Control Z to undo your movements next is the rotate pressing it you will see the colors of the axis in circles and clicking on them you will be able to rotate the object in this case I'm rotating the object around the Y axis pressing the blue one I'm rotating it around the Z axis and the X axis let's undo that control Z I keep getting confused between Z and Z now let's scale it pressing on the scale icon these little small colored cubes will appear and pressing on the Z axis you will scale it up on the Z axis the same with the X axis and the same with the Y axis but this is again using the icons on the left so you have to move your mouse cursor all the way from here to there to select it so in Blender the golden rule is learn your shortcut keys so let's go to the select box and here we have our cube again so to move an object with the shortcut keys you press G G is for grab you will see it will highlight in white and then you can press on your keyboard whatever axis you want to use for in this case G and then Z now I'm moving it up and down on the Z axis if you press the right mouse button it will snap back to its previous position and undo the movement you just made so let's again press G and for instance the Y axis press Y now it's locked to the Y axis again if you right click it will jump back to it where it was let's do it one more time G and X now it's snapped to the uh, X axis and let's put it over here and if you want to keep it at a certain position you press the left mouse button and it will stay to wherever you've taken it I'm gonna undo again control Z to snap it back to the middle now we're gonna do the rotation and the shortcut key is R on the keyboard pressing R you will be able to rotate it by moving the mouse but it won't be locked onto an axis so it will be difficult to rotate it into whatever position you want it to be so let's press Z and lock it to the Y axis pressing Y on the keyboard now it's locked to the Y axis and R X now it's locked on the X axis and the same with the Z axis let's undo that again and now we're gonna scale using the shortcut keys select the object left mouse button press S on your keyboard for scale and now when you move the mouse now it will scale uniformly let's snap it back with the right mouse button and now pressing S 
and whatever axis you want to snap it to let's say for in in this case X axis now it will only scale moving your mouse on the X axis and the same S and Y and now it's scaling on the Y axis and that's the basic for transforming your object you have another icon here that is transform when you click it it will have all of the other icons and movements in one circle you'll have your moving options you'll have your scaling options and your rotation options now let's get down to the fun stuff firstly we're going to create a new scene a new project go to file new and select general don't save and yet again we are greeted with the default scene we are going to delete everything in the scene and start from scratch to select everything in your scene press a on your keyboard you will see all your objects are highlighted press X to delete them and now we have an empty scene from which we can start building our little railway so let's add a cube and if you remember it's shift A to bring up the add menu we choose mesh and then cube there is the default cube again and now we're gonna turn this little cube into a rail firstly we will have to go into what is called edit mode in edit mode you will be able to manipulate this cube into almost any object you can think of to go into edit mode you press tab on your keyboard and you will suddenly see it changed from object mode into edit mode and you can see the toolbar has expanded again you will find the move the rotate the scale and transform but there's new ones as well extrude region insert faces bevel loop cut knife a lot of tools you can use to manipulate this object into whatever shape you want now firstly let's zoom into our little cube at the top here you will see these three icons a little dot a little stripe and a little square the dot is vertices select as you can see there's dots on the corners of this cube and you can select each dot these are called the vertices the second one with the stripe is called your edge select this will allow you to select the edges of the object and then the last one the little square is the face select mode here you will be able to select each individual face of your object now the shortcut keys for these are 1, 2 and 3 on your keyboard 1 for the vertices select 2 for the edge select and 3 for the face selection mode something else I quickly want to teach you is the pivot point let's quickly exit edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard in the middle of the 3D cursor you will see this little orange dot that is your pivot point at the moment it is set to be the center of the object the pivot point is extremely important because wherever you move that pivot point the object will scale and rotate around that point let's quickly move the 3D cursor out of the way with shift and right mouse button now you can see the pivot point if you click the right mouse button on the object you will get this object context menu a set origin geometry to origin origin to geometry origin to 3d cursor you can move the pivot point and it is extremely helpful when manipulating this object for instance if I press shift right mouse button to move the 3d cursor to that point of the object and I right mouse button click again select origin origin to 3d cursor 
the pivot point has moved. And when you scale, it will always scale towards the pivot point. And it will also rotate around the pivot point. Now, to move it back to the center, right mouse button click on your object, Origin to Geometry. Now it's back at the center. And let's move the 3D cursor back to the center as well by sh pressing Shift C. There we go. And now before we go back into edit mode to manipulate the object, we are quickly going to scale it to look more like a rail. Please take note that this rail won't be built according to scale. This is just a practice. We are going to scale this object to resemble that of a rail. Press S on your keyboard and Y and bring it in a bit. About there. Now let's go back into edit mode by pressing tab on your keyboard. Another trick I'm going to teach you is what is called loop cuts. By pressing Control R on your keyboard, it will add a loop cut. This is a single loop cut. When you press the left mouse button, it will apply the loop cut, but you have the option of moving it around to wherever you want it. Right mouse button snaps it back to it where it was, and there we have a loop cut. But we want more loop cuts to manipulate this object into looking like a rail. So let's press Ctrl Z to undo that, and let's press Ctrl R again. But we want four loop cuts in this case. And to achieve that, press Ctrl R to add a loop cut. And using your mouse wheel scrolling it, will add more loop cuts. We'll be needing four, and there we have it. Left mouse button to apply them, and again left mouse button to apply them in their current position because you can move them to wherever you want. But we want them in the center. And there we have the loop cuts. Now we are going to select the two loop cuts in the middle and scale them upwards. To do that press 2 on your keyboard for the edge select. By pressing Alt Shift and clicking on the edge it will select the whole edge. I'll quickly demonstrate again. Press 2 on your keyboard for edge select. Then by pressing Alt Shift left mouse button clicking on an edge will select that entire edge. You will see if you can select multiple edges at once, but we just want this one and this one. And now on the keyboard press S and Z to scale on the Z axis and move them up until about right here. Our next step is to scale these two faces inward. So by pressing 3 on your keyboard, we go into face select mode, select this face with left mouse button, rotate to the other side, hold in shift and select the opposite face. Now press S on your keyboard and Y to scale in the Y axis and let's move them in a bit. And left mouse button to apply starting to look more like a rail. But we need more loop cuts to make it look like a rail. So we're going to add two vertical loop cuts down the object. Scrolling the mouse wheel will add more loop cuts. Left click to apply. Left click again to apply again. And there we have them. And at the moment they're selected so we're going to scale them out on the Y axis as well by pressing S on your keyboard and Y and scaling them out. Let's say to about here. There we go. Now pressing 2 on the keyboard for edge select. We're going to select this edge and holding in shift we're going to select this edge and then we're going to bring them down a little bit by pressing G on the keyboard for grab and Z for the Z axis and bring them down just a little bit. 
and it's starting to look more like a rail. Another thing we're going to do is the bottom. And here's a new trick I'm, I'm going to teach you and it's the X-ray mode. Pressing Alt Z on your keyboard will toggle the X-ray mode. If you don't use the X-ray mode and you say f for instance you're selecting these faces, it will only select that one face but not the back one, nor the bottom. We want to select this whole bottom here, so pressing Alt Z on your keyboard will toggle the X-ray mode and then 3 on your numpad to view it on the orthographic perspective and then drag the box over the bottom and now you will see it's selected. We can exit X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z and we're gonna grab this face and move it upwards. Pressing G on the keyboard and then Z we're gonna move it upwards. Now 3 on the keyboard for face select. We're going to select this face and the opposite face and then we're going to scale it on the Y axis. S and Y. Let's quickly exit edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard and have a look at our little rail. And yes, it's starting to look like a rail. I'm just going to scale it a little bit more on the Y axis by pressing S and Y. And there we go, a basic rail. Please take into account again that I'm not doing this according to scale. What I usually do is I import a reference image and then design the object in front of the reference image so it can be as accurate as possible. But in this case, we're just going to do it basically. And now we have to scale this rail of ours to be longer. Select your rail, press S, and we're going to scale it on the x-axis. Let's zoom out a bit. Pressing S again and X. Let's do it like until here. Now we have a longer rail and now I'm going to teach you how to duplicate objects. With your object selected, press Shift D and then you will see it had made a duplicate of your other object. Right mouse button will snap it back to its original position. Be careful because that duplicate is now merged with the other one and we don't want that, we want to move the duplicate to the side. So pressing G for grab and Y we're gonna move it here. And there we have two sets of rail. Now we're going to quickly create a tie, a sleeper between the rails. So shift A to bring up the add menu. Choose cube and you will see the cube has been added where the 3D cursor is in the middle of the axes at the moment. Let's scale it with S and Y on the Y axis. And now let's move it by pressing G and Y. Let's go to top down view in orthographic mode by pressing 7 on your numpad. And G and Y and let's just move it a bit until it's in the center. There we go. Go back into perspective projection. And now we're going to scale it on the Z axis. And then we're going to scale it on the x-axis. Let's say like this. And maybe let's make it a little bit thicker. S and Z. There we go. And now we're going to move it to below our rails. Press 1 on your numpad to go into the side view, orthographic projection. 
press G for grab and Z and move it down, just touching the rails. And there we have a sleeper. Now we're going to duplicate them a few times. So I'm going to go to top down view, pressing 7 on the numpad, and shift D to duplicate, right mouse button to release, and then G to grab, and move it on the X axis. Now to make it quicker, I'm going to select both of these by pressing shift and left mouse button clicking, and then D to duplicate, right mouse button to deselect, and then G and X, and move it up until there. So now I'm going to select all four of them while holding in shift, shift and D for duplicate, right mouse button, and then G and X, and move them to this side. Now I'm going to box select each one of them, pressing G and X as well to grab them on the X axis, and let's move them like so. Now look at that, isn't that pretty? Now to finish this, we are going to create some basic fastenings. Move your 3D cursor to, let's say here, by pressing Shift and right mouse button. And then Shift and A to bring up the Add menu and add another cube. Pressing the period key on your numpad, we will zoom into that cube. G and Z, move it up. And S and Z to scale it. Let's go to top down view with 7 on your numpad, G and Y to grab it on the Y axis, and let's scale it a bit. On the X axis, there we go, pressing 3 on my numpad for the front view, G and Z to grab it on the Z axis. And now I'm just going to scale it until I'm happy with it. Scaling it on the Y axis, grabbing it on the Y axis, like so. I'm going to enter edit mode again with tab. I'm going to add a loop cut. Left mouse button to select it and then I'm going to move the loop cut about there. I'm going to go back into X-ray mode, and I just quickly want to tell you that X-ray mode is also available up here. That is the toggle X-ray mode, but like I said, the shortcut key is Alt-Z. I'm going to go back into the front view with 3 on my numpad, and I'm going to select these edges. And you will see all of them are selected. Going back, now I'm going to grab them on the Z axis, and I'm going to move them down. I'm going to box select the top ones, G and Z as well, to scale them down a bit. Now I can exit the X-ray mode and quickly have a look. It's extremely basic, but it's just to give you a good start on how to manipulate objects into shapes that you want. So I'm quickly going to duplicate all of these ones onto my ties, my sleepers. And there we go. Now we're going to select each one of them. Duplicate. Now we're going to rotate them. Going into top view, press R on your keyboard, and move the mouse until it rotates around. Holding in shift, you will get a more precise rotation. 
and grab on the Y axis and move them up until there. I'm going to duplicate it again and move it down here. And then I'm going to select these ones again. Duplicate and I'm going to move them up. And let's have a look. There's our basic little railroad. Blender might seem scary in the beginning and impossible to master, but the more you practice, the easier it gets and the possibilities are endless. Trust me, if I could do it, you can too. And never be afraid to reach out to the community and ask for help. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I really hope it inspired you to enter the world of 3D modeling where you can model and then 3D print almost anything your heart desires. The only limitations is how much you believe in yourself. Are we live yet? Chris Andre, I think you opened up a lot of people's eyes on what a free tool can do. Yes, I'm so, glad. So first, a few engineering-like questions. Um, before I Let's 3D go. print this, do, how do I dimension it so I can make sure that my rails are nine millimeters apart in N-scale? That is uh, usually what I do is I create the whole rail and when everything is finished, you don't have to care that much about scale, except you have to care about the width between the two rails, but that's the easy way you add in a plane or cube. And when you press N on the keyboard, you'll see the uh, pop-up menu coming up with the dimensions where you can set the millimeters or the meters of that cube. And then you just place your rails around that cube and when you finished everything, what you can do then is you tie all of them together by joining them to make one model. Mm -hmm. And then it's easy. You can just select, go back to the dimension properties and change them to the scale or size that you want. So uh, have you tried any of the other 3D modeling softwares like SketchUp? I've played around with them, but Blender intrigued me because of its animation properties as well and uh, the community and it's free. So that's why I started out with Blender. So I haven't had a lot of experience with other uh, programs. Um, there's a few that I played with, but Blender stole my heart from the beginning when I started playing around with it. So since I have an interest in it, have you ever drawn a giraffe or an elephant? or I think they call it an organic object? Yes, I've done some basic trees and so, which is organic, but usually going to that point, you have to have the basics of doing a building or something uh, non-organic, because going into more organic things, you go into a sculpting mode where it's like you have clay in your hands, and with that clay, you start sculpting it into an organic shape and so i've played around a little bit with animation characters but it's still it's still a ways off for me to understand it completely but it's such a wonderful challenge cool so someone mentioned in sketchup there's a resource called warehouse where models created by others are kept and you can download those um, and add it to your project is there something similar in blender blender doesn't have a a, like a warehouse inside of the program itself, but it has the options of what I usually do is I have a separate folder where I where I uh, save all the models I've downloaded. And there you can just, they call it in Blender, they call it to append. So you just append it to your project that you're having and it will be in the scene you're creating. And then you can 3D print it from there on. So, so you got to find these online somewhere or call a yes, friend. there's, yeah, somebody who can create it for you, or you can just Google. There's 
a lot of websites out there that offers free models and some of them offer um, paid options but a lot of the free models is is the best you can find out there because blender is free as well mm -hmm. so how many hours of learning blender do you think it would take a person of average intelligence to design something useful for me it was in the beginning and please know i also had no prior experience to modeling i had some experience with texture painting but not modeling so it took me about two weeks and about one to two hours each night of practice to design something that I can use and show off with and something practical that you can use in other scenes as well. And how long does it take the user to get familiar with all these keyboard commands? The keyboard commands is, is something that you get fairly quickly uh, used to but there's ways of finding there's online sheets they call it cheat sheets that you can find for google uh blender i mean you just google it uh, for the the cheat sheets for blender but before you know it it sounds like there's a lot of shortcut keys but i think i didn't even pass 10 shortcut keys in this video it's just you repeat them so much you don't even have to look at your fingers so you get it with practice you do get it, you do understand it, and, you know, it's muscle memory that builds, and then in a week or so, you have it. Then you'll understand the keyboard shortcuts, and they, you, you even start realizing how Blender functions with its shortcut system, and you start doing your own shortcuts, and you see, oh, wow, it works. It's like a little algorithm that you, that you start to figure out. So there is a list of shortcuts available online, yes. right? A lot of lists. Um, other than rails, what railroad objects have you enjoyed creating? And maybe they missed the first part of the layout uh, video showing your concept train. So things you like, like drawing. So uh, the thing that I wanted to design the first, when I knew I understood Blender well enough, it's the railroad. So I've created. In the beginning of the video, I showed it off a little bit, but it's a concept train I'm creating for a little story I'm writing. And uh, so for me, anything from the truck sets to the, uh, to the finer details like the chains, the, the wheels, the axles, the coupling, the knuckles, everything is something I enjoy creating. Even the little switching mechanisms next to a switch or a turnout point. So I love everything, and currently I'm starting to work on my locomotive. So where did you where did you learn all these things? What what was your uh, biggest source of information? My biggest source of information was uh, to learn Blender was the tutorials on YouTube. But for me, for the trains, and so I'll watch a lot of YouTube videos to find inspiration for the type of train I want to create, a concept train I want to create for myself. I hope that answers the question. So did you have a favorite YouTube teacher? Yes, there's two. The main one is a Blender Guru. You'll find him, he's everywhere on, uh, on YouTube. And the second person is Grant Abbott. He also has amazing, I started out with Grand Abbott's beginner tutorials and then moved on to Blender Guru. Mm -hmm. So back to the technical things a bit, can you step and repeat um, things so that you don't have to copy three ties to get six ties? Can you say, hey, I want 24 ties spaced at a certain distance? Yes, there's a, but that gets into a bit more of the advanced settings, but you'll find what they call modifiers. So once you have one tie or a joint or a fastening, the, they call it the array modifier. You'll have the option of choosing an object, adding the array modifier to it, and then you can tell it on what axis you want to uh, copy and duplicate it as much as you want and the distance you want as well. So for railroad designing, that is extremely quick way 
to do it is adding the array modifier, telling it how much duplicates of that one object you want and how far to space it. Okay. Um, does this tool have the ability to import and export um, your images into some standard types like DXF, OBJ, um, STL files? Yes, it does have, and uh, there's a lot of extensions that you can download and on some plugins that you can find that's free that give you the ability to convert it to much lesser known formats or extremely popular formats that you, you can use in other programs as well. Cool. Okay, so how long did it take you to draw that concept train that you showed in the beginning? That concept train took me about, the train plus the tracks, it took me about two months now because uh, I was also learning as I was going. But uh, yeah, it took about two months to get to the point where it is, uh, the train plus the uh, tracks. So I'm just going to do the environment in the next month and my concept locomotive. Okay, did you, uh, did you use any of the video creating capabilities of this or was that what you used to create that little farmhouse with the windmill um, as a video? Yeah, video, um, if I understand the, the question correctly, Blender has a video editor inside of it. And uh, you also have the option of, like the little camera, you can animate your objects or camera movements. Is that the question you asked? Yes, yes. Yes. So you have, like in the scene I showed about the little house, the Courage the Cowardly Dog house with the, uh, with the windmill, is you have the option of animating any object you want, moving it, uh, as much as you want to any particular space in the 3D world in a certain amount of frames per second. And that camera is your, like, you're the director. You tell that camera where you want it, where you want to focus it on, and then you export it as a movie file. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so I don't see any more 3D printing, um, uh, 3D design questions here. There's a few no questions problem. about printing and the learning and tips. So you're welcome to say if you've tried any 3D printing of these things or any of the software that you use past um, Blender. Okay. Yeah, so for me, basically the program programs I used is Blender. and uh, But I myself don't own a 3D printer. But I have learned how to design the models to work with a 3D printer. So basically that is for my texturing, for painting the scenes I want to paint. There I use different free open source programs as well, like paint.net and so. Okay. Okay, then back to Namibia. Uh, yes. Do you know the gauge of the Namibian railroad? Yes, it's 1067 millimeters cape gauge. And in uh, it's also 3.5 feet. So, so that is our the main Cape gauge as it's used in South Africa and all in the southern parts of Africa. And you want to tell us about the train that your grandma came to town with? <laughs> yeah, the old narrow gauge uh, was 600 millimeters. I don't even know in feet how much it is, but that is, it's two feet actually. I know right. it's two feet. Right. And uh, she came all the way from Mosselby, took her three weeks. Uh, Mosul buys in South Africa, and it took her three weeks to get with the little steam train all the way to uh, Ochu. And uh, the best part is uh, when <laughs> the train never had the power to climb up the grade to our town, so it had to leave a lot of wagons down at the bottom. And when climbing the grade, it was so slow, you can actually climb out and walk next to it. <laughs> Let me just quickly scan if there's more questions. Nope, nothing here. Okay. So, Chris Andri, thank you very, very, very much. Um, thank you, too. You got me interested. I'm going to draw, draw that glad. class 33 locomotive before you do. That's the challenge. <laughs> That's a good challenge. I'll <laughs> accept that challenge.